to exist is to relate. And that to the extent that our relationships are cut off, we become smaller. And to the extent that we recover our relationships through intimacy with people and with nature and with all beings, then we become more existing. We become more, um, we become fuller. Whatever material reality is, our social reality, our, our collectively constructed reality is woven from stories. The things that seem real to us in our lives, like laws, like corporations, like money, these are nothing but networks of symbol. They're, they're, they are meaningful symbols that are woven together into a story that are embedded in larger and larger and larger stories. So when I see a little piece of the world as it could be, I feel a sense of recognition and homecoming. Like, yeah, this is how it's supposed to be. When I see somebody being really, really generous, and maybe that generosity is resting in a story of, we're all in this together. You are my brother. Uh, and there's enough for everybody. Someone's really grounded in that story then the generosity that they display and the gratitude, it, it's like it evokes a memory in me of the way that things will be someday, a memory of a more beautiful future. And so I recognize the feeling communicated by these little bits and pieces of another story. And then I begin to put them together. We are reaching the, 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 end of a story that has carried civilization for thousands of years. And it is, in a way, you could say the story is ripening. It's reached its maximum expression. And as yin gives birth to yang at, a, at its extreme, so also is this story giving birth to its successor. And that birth process is a convergence of crises that are like a birth crisis, pushing us out of the world that we have been in. And even if we try to hold on to it and grasp for, uh, you know, make America great again stories or something like that, still we are being propelled down the birth canal toward a, a world that is qualitatively different than anything we've known. Um, a revolution that is so, so, the previous revolutions, I mean, like the agricultural revolution, industrial revolution, information revolution, these were intensifications, landmark intensifications of the story of separation. That, and each one of them took us to a position of greater mastery and dominance over the rest of creation. And now? And now what we are faced with is a different kind of revolution that isn't an intensification, even though that's trapped in that story, we think maybe that our salvation lies in intensifying where we have already been going. So that if we finally develop nanotechnology and precise genetic engineering, then we can engineer the world and ourselves to finally finally redeem the promise of technology, of a, of a, tech, of a utopia. A finish line. Yeah. And I think that that's kind of a definition of insanity. When what you're doing isn't working, do even more of it. So there are technologies, I call them technologies of reunion, that are built on a different story, that are built on a story of, not of domination, but of cooperation and participation. So like you could, like an example would be regenerative agriculture or permaculture that says that if we really take good care of the soil, we'll be better off too. And our and and agriculture is about participating in an in a overall wellness well-being that includes ourselves, but is not here just to serve ourselves. And the results from this approach to agriculture are, in a way, miraculous. Like there are people doing this without pesticides, without herbicides, uh, and getting much bigger yields than than chemical industrial agriculture gets. Um, and replenishing the soil and the water table at the same time. Like things that, that an agronomist wouldn't recognize as in the realm of possibility, it's happening right now. That's 
And that's the kind of results that we can get from being in a different story. We become miracle workers when we're in a different causality. So if you had one thing, a quote, a call to action, something for people to take action on before you tell them a little bit more about you and where to find you, what would you say and why? I would say that because we are on a living planet, all things are interconnected because all things are interconnected and because even humanity is an organ of this planet. That means that any healing work that you do in any one place is also part of global healing. So you might look at climate change and, and say, well, my work with troubled youth or my work with homeless people or my work with prisoners, what good does that do? What does that matter? But when we understand that the world outside of ourselves is not composed of a bunch of independent separate things, but that all are woven together into a unity, then you understand that whatever your heart calls to you to do, whatever makes you care, whatever brings forth the love within you and applies it to the world, that's what you should be doing. 